Hello, hello, Erica Hargaden here, Certified Child Sleep Consultant with my private practice, Babogue. I'm the creator of the Sleep Series, which is an online sleep program, all based around video content and my seven steps to better sleep to help you on your sleep journeys with your little one. And I'm a mum of three. So there's very little I haven't seen myself with my own children in my family life on the sleep front. I want to have a chat with you guys today about rolling and how rolling can impact in on your child's sleep. Maybe how to anticipate it, how to deal with it and some just simple tips and tricks. So you should really start anticipating rolling coming into the mix from about eight weeks. I know that sounds really, really early, but you're encouraged from very early on to do tummy time with your child. And this is really to strengthen their backs and their necks so that they can gain this skill over rolling. So you will very often see children from this age range start to make the attempts towards rolling. So if you are still swaddling, at this age range, I would encourage you to stop and move to an age appropriate sleeping bag. Because if your child rolls in a swaddle, it's simply not safe. They won't be able to lift their heads up. So I would encourage you to move away from it. Also, if you're using any nests, pods or cocoon type um, sleeping uh, environments for your child, number one, they're not safe sleep. So I don't, um, I don't advise them, period. Um, and also, if you're using them and your child rolls in them, there is a risk to your child involved here. And also, they're very restrictive. We don't sleep like this. We move in our sleep. And that's very, very, very natural and normal. So allowing freedom of movement for your child is extremely important. So I would encourage you to move from maybe the use of these and perhaps the use of the bedside sleepers, which do often say they're appropriate until six months of age, but usually by about four months, your child is the full of it. So move to a full size cot. They might seem quite big for your little baby, but they're gonna allow that freedom of movement as your child gains skills over this developmental stage. So, making sure you do the tummy time that I had mentioned during the day so that they can get the strength over the neck and the back and encourage them to gain, you know, kind of freedom over this skill that they need to learn. So what you're going to see is that your child will roll from their back to their front first and they'll get stuck. They won't be able to roll back again and this will cause frustration. They'll probably be able to lift up their head and move their head from side to side, but they won't be able to roll back because that's the second stage of it. So doing your tummy time during the day and encouraging this is going to help them gain this skill. But when they go down to bed at night, you're going to put them in on your back because that's safe sleep. And then they'll probably roll over and get stuck and frustrated. So you need to go to them and you need to put them back onto their back and provide them with some reassurance and comfort and allow them to gain and go into their sleep phases themselves. Now, this is going to happen maybe throughout the night and be, can be quite disruptive in the early phases of them learning this. So going to them and putting them back onto their back is very, very important. Always make sure you check your baby. If they're in this transitionary phase and they're not able to roll from their front to their back again, make sure you go to them before you go to bed and check on them and put them back onto their back. But as your child, you know, gets stronger and ages a little bit more, they're going to gain more control over this skill. And they're going to be able to do that front to back rolling, what I call the 360 rolling, themselves. And very often, once children gain a little bit of skill over this, they get quite comfortable with sleeping on their tummy. Now, you definitely should always put your child into their cot on their back. And once they gain control over, full control over the rolling themselves, they're going to find positions that they're comfortable sleeping in themselves. They might look very, very awkward to us, but very often they're quite happy sleeping in those positions. But this is down to 
parental preference and what you feel comfortable with. So you need to move your child onto their back whenever you feel that you need to do that. That's really, really important that you do that. But understanding that in time, they will gain control over this 360 rolling and that they will get more comfortable with sleeping in different positions on their side, on their back, on their tummy, bum up in the air, all of that, that you get comfortable with that and let them at it. So freedom of movement in their cot is extremely, extremely important. But let's go back again, lads, tummy time. Lots and lots of opportunity for tummy time and rolling on flat surfaces during the day is very, very important. Really, that's key to this. The more opportunity that you give your child to do this, the, the sooner they're going to gain control over this skill and the less frustration will be involved in terms of the impact of it in on their sleep. So I hope you found that useful. If you want to know a little bit more about me, you can check out my website, babo.com. Thank you.